Hi everyone, this is Shantae, aka Shantizi. Welcome to my analysis on this Saturday evening, June 20th, 2020. It wasn't a big news cycle, but I'm about to get to today's um, analysis here. So I hope you guys are having a great Saturday. A great weekend um it's gonna be father's day tomorrow so i'm glad you guys are having a um a blast so here we go so the coronavirus we are said we are at 2.2 million but it's almost close to 2.3 so we are two exactly two million two hundred and fifty four thousand and six hundred and thirty cases of COVID 19 um, and the death toll is 119,714. It's almost close to the 120 mark. And a lot of states have seen rises. I know yesterday Florida saw 4,000. I'm not sure about today, but I do have some, I have a number on um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Donald Trump is today. Um, but there's other countries behind us that do have a lot of, cases of COVID-19. So this is Brazil has 1 million and 32 and 913 cases of COVID-19. Russia has 576 162 cases of COVID. India has 3, 395,848 cases of COVID. UK has 300,004 580 cases and Peru has 247,925 cases of COVID-19. So only brown places I know. Peru is next in line to India. India is brown, but it's Southeast Asia. And Brazil is mixed because Brazil has black Portuguese people and white Portuguese people. Uh, you would have thought that Africa would have been on this list. Nah. Africa has the least cases. Africa and the Caribbeans have the least cases of COVID-19. Hey, cousin. So they have the cases of the least cases of COVID-19. So Africa has the least cases while America has the most cases. So I'm going to read this to you again. So America has 2,254,000. 1,630 cases. We have 100 and almost 119 people dead. While the Caribbeans and Africa have less than 1,000. Probably. If I could find those numbers on the John Hopkins website, because that's where I get that from, I'll let you guys know. Or maybe I could Google the numbers. But they, I wanted to, I want to cite sources, though. Just saying. So, Trump's rally, it was supposed to be like millions of people, as he promised, but there was like about less than 20,000, less than 15,000 people there. I mean, people don't want to die. Listen, if I, if I was, if hypothetically if i was because i don't like donald trump i never did i'm a lifelong new yorker i know what kind of con games he played if i was a life if i was a trump supporter i wouldn't show up to that shit all these people dying and then since reopening there's more people sick and more people dying because of the reopening and how the reopening faces are in these different states i think i want to stay my ass home I don't know. But these people here, they were unmasked. I'm about to get into this report. They were unmasked and close to each other face to face. While there was protesters outside of Trump's rally in Tulsa who was actually protesting Black Lives Matter. And the reason why it's outrage because... The area that he's in, he's not too far from where the Green the Greenwood Massacre, which was is the Black Wall Street. That's what it's known as in Tulsa. Was a deadly massacre of three hundred. I think three hundred black people were killed because of the businesses that they had. It was almost the same as Rosewood, Florida. These 
there's black people that are established themselves right after um right after the the uh right after reconstruction no right after the civil war reconstruction this is like in the 1920s like the early 1920s 1921 that's when the greenwood massacre in tulsa happened you can research it because i'm pretty sure none of us has learned about it in school i learned about it off time about black wall street as a kid or growing up but not learning in school per se i feel like it should be in all school curriculums in all states honestly to tell you about the black wall street because they only teach you about slavery but they don't teach you about the black wall street just saying and you're right t like i really uh i've been staying in my house i don't care new york city's supposed to be in phase two won't catch me out there like that i work from home i'll go get my go to work once a week maybe twice a week in the office and work from home because i'm gonna slowly transition because supposed to be a second wave of COVID 19. It's almost like influenza of 18, 1918. But, um, yeah, there were protesters out there with masks on while the Trump rally people were unmasked. Uh, but six members of his um, team, according to an NBC News report, I've written it down right here. You always got to take your notes. You always got to cite your sources. Six members of Trump's um, campaign staff team in Tulsa um, tested positive for coronavirus. The campaign said that they performed hundreds of uh, tests ahead of uh, Trump's rally. Six members were tested. Six members of that were um, tested, according to the campaign, uh, said they had tested hundreds of uh, people and quarantine procedures were implemented. That's what the campaign manager said. Uh, the campaign has required all attendees at the event to sign a digital waiver. Oh, wow, in South Carolina? Gee. Yeah, Miss T. Uh, Realize the campaign and Trump liability that they won't get sick. So basically, he told the supporters who was attending the event that they have to sign a waiver because they're not responsible and not liable for these people that's unmasked by choice, by their own choice, to get sick. That's why, as yet yeah, T, I'll, st I'll stay my ass home. I, I miss working. I've been applying for jobs in my field because I am part of phase two, technically, if I was still working. And I could be working from home, which I plan to work from home. Maybe go in the office twice a week and work from home because a lot of people are doing that. And my, and my field is high demand, so working from home is the best. But... Back to this more of this report from NBC News in terms of Trump's people getting sick. Previously reported by NBC News, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks, who have no one hasn't seen in a while, of the Corona um, White House Corona Task Force, the Coronavirus Task Force, excuse me, expressed concern last week over the safety of holding the Trump rally uh, in Oklahoma has seen a significant rise in COVID cases in Tulsa and the um, rise in COVID. And Oklahoma is 10,000. They got 10,000 cases and counting. And the city of Tulsa, the county of Tulsa, where they at, it's about almost 2,000 cases. They saw a rise in 136 cases as of today, as of the state reported today. They saw a 100% spike this past week. Because the health officials warn trump to not have this thing yeah i don't understand why people don't wear their mask neither because i know i wear my mask and i wear gloves i'm a crazy person unfortunately he's the leader of the free world but i don't consider him as my leader because i don't trust him but yeah there's high cases so it was previously announced that attendees um according to the campaign um communications director that they were given temperature checks as soon as they come in that's bullshit and um wristbands and face masks but if you look at the tv if you look at snippets on social media like twitter and all of that they're not wearing their mask these people are not wearing masks <laughs> they're like out there droplets out of their mouth it's more white people they believe it's a hoax 
They don't believe that coronavirus is real until they get sick. It, it takes a couple days to settle in your system that you have fatigue, shortness of breath, fever over 103. Um, you have a cold. You have a cold in your chest. Oh, gee. So, yeah. And I'm going to get into the Southeast in a minute, Danella, because the Southeast is crazy. And and, 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 and T, it is BS. And and um, Miko, it, it, it is um, temperature check. Like, you can, you can have it without symptoms. You can be asymptomatic. Any of us could be asymptomatic. That's why testing is important. And then he said the quiet parts, Allah. I'm about to get to the... the the dialogue of his um, rally because that man, where's my note for it? I can't find it. There we go. So he gloated about uh, several things that's untrue, gloated about Biden, gloated about this. But what he said, the quiet parts out loud. He said testing is a double-edged sword. And um, touting 25 people, um, twenty. he tested, he touted, he tested 25 million people. That's still not enough. Um, slow, slow the testing down. He said kids are, and the kids are much stronger. He says he's doing more testing in Germany in them. So why Germany has the least cases out of, out of the states that I just read? The highest cases in Europe is the UK. And yes, of course, he cursed. I didn't see a lot of the out of his speech because I, he's lying. He's lying about the tax um, cut saying it helped people. It really didn't help people. It helped the rich people because those same people that support him are people that are struggling, that are people that are unemployment, that people that have no jobs, people that are on SNAP, which oh, well, New York calls it SNAP, but food stamps and welfare and have blue collar jobs. And I'm probably getting sick. And probably walking around asymptomatic. I don't even know. So, criticize Joe Biden. Tell him he has dementia and all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. If you think about it, when it came to handling a pandemic, or almost near a pandemic, it was the Obama administration, including his vi vice president, Joe Biden, who was the one that handled H1N1 swine, swine flu, excuse me, and Ebola. I think Trump wants to shh because you got 120 lives on your hands and counting. Two million positive cases of COVID. And you call it Kung Flu and you call it the Chinese virus. That's racist as hell. That's why Kamala Harris wants to put out legislation in the Senate saying he cannot, him and conservatives cannot use the use Kung Flu or Chinese virus describing COVID-19 because it's a pandemic. COVID-19 is all over the map. It's everywhere. Even in places that don't have the most cases, like Africa don't have the most cases that he talked so much shit about. There's, um, what else? Cases like, um, no, what is it? Countries like Jamaica, Trinidad, has the least cases of COVID-19. Trump and the Republicans want to do their homework before they criticize people because we have the most cases. And yes, you know there was a picture, Danella, but guess what? That's what we have right now. This is what happens when you don't come and vote in primaries. If you sit your ass out in the voting thing, I don't respect people that don't vote. I don't. I don't want to hear what you have to say. So, yeah. You already got celebrities, certain celebrities telling us to hold our vote. You got Snoop Dogg telling us it's going to be the first time he voted this year. Yeah, he is better than the clown that we have right now. Yeah. 
all he, it's all depending on his VP pick. It's all depending. I just don't want it to be no white woman. Because this whole thing, people got the blacks. Because that's what the progressive left is doing. The progressive left of the party. They call themselves progressive left of the party because they don't realize progressivism is not being lazy in the Senate and passing seven bills and renaming. That includes renaming two, um, what she's call it? Two more. Yeah, and it's going to get worse in four years. Two more. What is it? Two more. Um, two post offices. Bernie Sanders. Elizabeth Warren only passed 10 bills. Some of it she co-signed on. Some of it really didn't pass. To me, that's not progressivism. Progressivism is when you pass, actually pass shit and get shit fucking done in the Senate. Not calling yourself a, a progressive and you pass legislation that can't even get full support from the whole Democratic Party. That's not progressivism. He will talk that crap about Jesse Jackson, but Jesse Jackson sure enough was progressive because he got shit done. And he didn't even serve in like the Senate. He got shit done with just doing his activism, doing what he does, a rainbow coalition and all that. So there you got it. Because I'm about to destruct some of these conservatives, I think, in the next... It has to be a separate video because I'm so tired of them. I'm so tired of these little young, white, 20-something liberals that don't know shit was babies during the Clinton administration and don't know that how people actually lived better than people are living now. I lived through the Bush era. I went to college during the Bush era. It's not a great time for people like me. Yep, she, she, I said, none of them do anything, in my opinion. Kamala wants a Juneteenth now, but when it really is caught, finally caught on. But then again, you got to get, unfortunately, you Republicans are running the world. They're running the country, and it's not good. That's why elections, they matter. When we complain about politicians not doing their job, Like the other side, they can't do their job because guess what? There's Republicans. And what Republicans have done, they painted a picture on the Democratic Party. When Republicans in modern day history since 1960s haven't done things for the people like that. It's a small smidget, like a very thin layer. But they haven't done shit. When Democrats actually want to pass a Justice and Policing Act, Republicans don't even want to take that up, but they want Tim Scott to pass some phony legislation. So I understand everybody's frustrations with the party right now, but I just feel like this is a time we do have to hold people's feet accountable. It's not about voting for the presidency. And if you just started, if you're just voting for just for the presidency, you're sadly mistaken. You're listening to the wrong live. So it's important for you to like, Really read, educate yourself with the three branches of government. The legislative part, I always say, is the strongest, them, and the judicial then comes to the executive because the legislative is the one that make the laws and pass the laws. That's why voting for people in the Senate, Congress, helps. Courts, hell yeah. Because right now, the courts are becoming more conservative. The more people sit on their ass, the conservative is supposed to be the silent my majority, even though they, to me, are the silent minority. It's important. We can't afford four more years of crap. We got to hold our legislators accountable. I believe, because there's an advisory board that's happening right now. Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders have conjoined together. To do an advisory board. So Alexander Ocasio-Cortez is on it. Some Bernie Sanders people are actually serving on the advisory board. You can look it up online. They're serving on the advisory board. They're pushing Biden more to progressive policies. That's how you get... That's how progressives are supposed to work. Not sit on the sidelines and talk shit. I'm looking at what I got to talk about next. That's 
not how it go. Like Trump's children are spewing the crap, crap of shit. But they're far right extremists. They're not even conservatives. Because conservatives don't even talk like that. But as a progressives, I'm talking about the Democratic side now. Progressive is not just sitting there being lazy and, and complaining on the Senate floor or the House floor and not passing shit. Not co-sponsoring on legislation that can actually get passed through the House and then the Senate. That's why it's important to work together. Working together, you can actually get shit done. We got to change the situation in the Senate because the House... We got the house locked down. We just got to keep it more locked down. But we got to change the situation in the Senate. Because the Senate is the big problem. The Senate is the one that, that appoints judges and attorneys. And I'm about to get into Saturday night massacre. The Saturday morning massacre, Friday night, whatever massacre. So Bill Barr, Attorney General Bill Barr, according to the Washington Post, um... Decided to force Jeffrey Ber um, Berman, who is the Manhattan U.S. Attorney for the Southern Southern District of New York, who um was investigating Trump's allies, including Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City, Michael Cohen, and two accomplices with Rudy Giuliani. He decided to step down because the quotation from what he wrote to William Barr is he basically wanted Barr to follow suit and to appoint his deputy, which is her name is um, Audrey um, Strice, to deputy, I mean, to, temp, to um, temporary U.S. attorney until the administration appoints someone. And Berman was actually, um, was actually uh, appointed by the New York federal court he wasn't a trump appointee appointee this attorney this this u.s attorney was actually appointed by the the state of new york so technically speaking he wasn't a trump appointing a trump ally at all he was independent we i didn't know what his political affirmation was or affiliation was but we do know that he was independent and he was doing his job just like Pete Peraro was doing his job investigating Trump and even investigating Mayor de Blasio so when people get fired like that that is because you know he they're investigating people he was supposed to be um he wanted um Barr wanted him to uh, work uh, for the New York State, um, the New York, the New Jersey um, U.S. Attorney Office. He declined it. He was supposed to be working for somewhere else in Washington. He declined it. Because why would you, why would you leave a job when you're doing your job and doing the best of your job? So this uh, Strice lady is going to continue on his investigation on Trump allies. She can't impede, impede the investigation. This is a Saturday Night Massacre. This is exactly what he, one of the reasons he got impeached. This is why we have to vote. And this should be a continuing thing. Not because we have a bad leader. You should vote all the time. Not every four years. Every election year. Small elections do matter. Because I... I am pissed off with some of the people in the New York City administration. I'm pissed off with the public advocate because he didn't do shit. I'm slightly pissed off with the mayor for his second term. I'm like almost pissed off with everybody. This is why you vote. This is exactly why you vote. Your vote counts and your vote matters. Uh, but Trump said because um, it's, this thing was up to bar. He, he even said it like it's up to Barr. This is not his department. William Barr needs to resign. It was it was told. It was called. His resignation was called a while ago to resign. And he didn't. He didn't. So as I conclude this short live, because I'm, I'm not trying to stay here long tonight. Please vote. Please stay aware. Stay, stay woke. You don't have to consume yourself with this stuff all day long. 
but you have to know something. It's very important that you know what's going on because if you don't know what's going on, you'll be lost in the sauce. I always say people, you'll be lost in the sauce. And read. Read books if you want to. Read articles. Online research, not Wikipedia though. No. Wikipedia is where people edit and mix shit up. I mean, history.com, PBS, uh, other historical websites, some even some university stuff with some high scholars. It's important that you stay awake. And yes, we don't have the candidate that we want as our Democratic presumptive nominee, but he's the presumptive nominee. And honestly, to tell you the truth, he's actually kind of been stepping his game up in terms of embracing different policies. He just needs to pick a black woman as his VP and not just anyone. Someone that can actually implement policies that can work with him, that can act, represent us around the world. Because the VP, 50 or 60% of their job is overseas with our foreign allies. And there's a lot of uh, restoring the relationship that the next VP has to do. Even the next president has to do. Because we're isolated. Our federal courts is filled with conservative judges who want to overturn Roe v. versus Wade. Who's still trying to do stuff to gut the ACA because it's up in court now. In the Supreme Court. It is exactly why I tell people your vote counts. So as I say, stay woke, stay aware, but also don't consume yourself with this all day long. See you soon. Have a good night.